My name is Ian Walsh, and this is The Moment Money Matters with Hard Money Bankers. Joined day three with Kevin Gillen from, uh, from Drexel, The Economist. That, um, if you haven't heard of him, you should, and you should download his reports because they're absolutely killer, which after I saw him, I had to have him on the show. He graciously accepted. So thank you, Kevin, for being on. Thank you, Ian. So I wanted to touch on something Kevin got into in the last um, in the last discussion, which was discussing where there's opportunity and where there's some red flags. One of the red flag markets you discussed was South Jersey, which is very interesting. As I was looking recently, because I moved my office is in the old city area, and I was living out in Reading, Pennsylvania, for several years, commuting two hours a day. There's no badge of honor in a you know, four-hour commute on a daily basis. So I said I'm moving. So I said, all right, I'm going to move 15 minutes from my office. If I'm going to move, I'm going to move. It's not going to be 30 minutes. It's not going to be 45. Just so happened that South Jersey has, I said, this is crazy. I said, how is this not developed right now? And how am I 15 minutes from center city, Philadelphia? This is nuts to me. Because anywhere else I looked, I could not find out what I wanted necessarily from that distance on the uh, Philadelphia side. And I'm, like, and I'm thinking in my head, is this like an untapped resource that nobody's understanding? I mean, you should have every commuter in the city coming from South Jersey. I still didn't know the answer until you just basically said it. Can you expand in your last one why South Jersey is not going to develop into maybe what I just said it was or what's preventing it from actually turning into that awesome suburb of the Philadelphia market? Well, once upon a time, it used to be an awesome suburb of the Philadelphia market. Um, unfortunately, New Jersey made uh, uh, several decisions in the 1960s and 70s that uh, started to reverse that trend. Uh, in urban economics, we have a saying, cities don't die of natural causes, they commit suicide. And a lot of South Jersey municipalities did exactly that by essentially implementing zoning that made the word uh, first time family a four-letter word. Uh, there are many, if you drive through South Jersey, you'll see many office parks that were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s that are half vacant or, or even dark entirely. Um, and many small retail plazas that were built during that same period. The reason being is that when you combine that zo those zoning decisions with the fact that New Jersey already has the highest pro average property taxes in the country, it made it very, very expensive there for young first-time home buyers to buy. Now, in the short run, a lot of households that were more affluent didn't really mind that because it kept, you know, too many kids out of the school system and it ensured only older, more affluent people live in the township and, you know, it kept public services up and the like. But over time, you know, the, the managers in the offices there, uh, you can't staff your office only with the executive vice presidents, right? You need middle management and you need young analysts there as well. Well, that labor pool dried up because they can afford to live in South Jersey. So then the office park started to go dark. And that's when the, the down cycle really began, because once you start losing the jobs, and you know, eventually you've got an older graying population that's left, you know, they're eventually going to pass on, and what you have left with is uh, you know, abandoned, uh, overtaxed homes, or at least uh, homes with depressed prices. On top of that, the demographics of South Jersey, which, which are entwined with the dynamic I just described, are basically it's a graying population. New Jersey also has, I believe, the highest estate tax of any state in the country. So there's a very strong incentive uh, if you're going to pass on, pass away, you don't do it in, in Jersey. Uh, the, the joke is that if you think New Jersey is expensive to live in, just try dying there. So you've got people taking their wealth right out of the state, you know, who are in their old age, which of course is further detracting from you know, funding for public services and driving school quality down and so forth. And you, you just sort of get in that, uh, that death spiral. And then lastly, as I mentioned in the, the previous uh, conversation we had, uh, those are just the structural factors that are, are headwinds on South Jersey. There's also cyclical factors as well. Uh, namely, it's a very, very long foreclosure process. It's the longest of any state in the country. Three to five years is the average length of foreclosure. And that just puts a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of foreclosure inventory left over from the recession. It's still working its way through the pipeline and is uh, further working to sort of uh, depress prices there. That said, I wouldn't paint with too broad a brush. I mean, there are certainly pockets in South Jersey, uh, Haddonfield and Cherry Hill, which are doing well. Uh, we see signs of revitalization in uh, Bordenton, uh, even in Pensacon, uh, and places like that. But, uh, I mean, I can tell you Salem County, for example, is easily the most depressed housing market in the region. Uh, everyone keeps talking about Camden's eventual comeback. It, it you know, always seems to get a spurt, but never really gets to uh, gain any long-term traction. You know, it, it could happen. I certainly hope it does. Uh, but, you know, for, for a lot of these townships, uh, until they can offer decent schools at, you know, reasonable uh, property taxes, and the access to jobs is not just in Philadelphia, but it's also on the Jersey side, uh, you know, I just see them lagging the rest of the region in, in terms of any type of serious housing recovery. That is some good information right there, ladies and gentlemen. That will be, uh, mark that down. Because I got a lot of guys that invest in South Jersey. And, and like you said, it doesn't mean you paint with a broad brush, but you got to buy a little bit differently in South Jersey than maybe you would, especially for the long haul, um, for the indications of where the market's moving. So if you want to. I would to say, you, in, if you're investing in South Jersey, you need to be, you know, you're doing surgical strikes, not carpet bombing, you know, in your location decision. Perfect. I love it.
Um, so guys, go to, uh, so to find uh, Kevin's reports and find more awesome information like this, Lindy Housing Report, Google it. You'll find it on the Drexel site, all free. His reports are fantastic. We're just scratching them now. And uh, kevin.c.gillen, G-I-L-L-E-N, at drexel.edu.